The Ahmadiyya movement believe that Jesus survived the crucifixion and migrated eastward towards Kashmir to escape persecution. He went on to spread his message to the lost tribes of Israel after he had carried out his mission to the Israelites in Judea. Living to old age, he later died a natural death in Srinagar, Kashmir. The Ahmadiyya movement considered Jesus a mortal man and a prophet of God, born to the Virgin Mary, in line with contemporary Islamic views on Jesus. Ahmadiyya however diverges from the majority Islamic view that Jesus was raised up to heaven and remains alive there. According to Ahmadiyya, a literal interpretation of some of Jesus' miracles in the Quran such as creating birds and bringing the dead back to life is inconsistent with the Quran and attributes a semi-divine status to Jesus. This understanding is therefore rejected for a hermeneutic approach to understanding the Quranic verses on account of these actions. For example, Jesus bringing the dead back to life is understood in the context of bringing back a spiritual life to people who were spiritually dead. Ahmadi scholars consider the contemporary Islamic views of the second coming of Jesus see Ahmadi prophetology as inaccurate. The view of Jesus' expected return in person is deemed as mistaken since the return of an Israelite prophet after Muhammad is seen as violating the finality of Muhammad s prophethood and of the Islamic dispensation. Jesus is believed to have died a natural death, like all other prophets. In the Quran and Hadith there is an absence of the use of terms such as return or second coming with reference to Jesus. Advent in the end times, the movement interpret the prophecies concerning Jesus. S end time advent as allegorical, expressing the coming of a person from within Islam itself being in the likeness of Jesus. The prophecies are merged with those concerning the coming of the Mahdi. Both the terms Jesus son of Mary and Mahdi as used in Islamic eschatological literature are understood interchangeably as two titles for the same person. Ahmadis believe these prophecies have been fulfilled in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the founder of the movement. Ahmadiyya believe that the Turin Shroud is authentic. Topic. Overview Topic. The idea of Jesus having traveled to India had been put forth before the foundation of the Ahmadiyya movement, most notably by Nicholas Notovich in 1894. Ghulam Ahmad, in his treatise Jesus in India, Urdu, Masi Hindustan Mine, proposed a post crucifixion journey arguing that Jesus survived crucifixion and traveled to India only after his apparent death in Jerusalem. He expressly rejected the theory of a pre-crucifixion visit as Notovich had postulated, the teaching was further researched by Ahmadi missionaries. Kamal Ud Din and Khwaja Nazir Ahmad 1952, who added to Notovich's theory of his first earlier visit. History The first response in English to Ahmad S teaching came in a book by Howard Walter, an Urdu-speaking American pastor in Lahore, The Ahmadiyya Movement 1918. Walter, like later scholars, identified the Islamic version of the Barlam and Husafat story as the primary source of Ahmad. S. Evidence Despite the fact that the four chapters of his book are arranged around evidence from the Gospels, the Quran and Hadith, medical literature and historical records, respectively, according to Ahmadiyya teaching the Rosa Bal tomb in Srinagar, which contains the grave of a holy man known as Yuz Asaf, is actually the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth, while the material of Notovich and Ahmad has been examined and dismissed by historians such as the Indologist Gunter Gronbold and Norbert Klatt it has been supported by others such as the archaeologist Fida Hasnain and the writer Holger Kersen. Publications Ahmadis have published extensively on the topic of Jesus' natural death and have expanded on Ghulam Ahmad. S. Work in light of newer research. In 1978, Mirza Nasir Ahmad, the third Khalifa, travelled to London where the International Conference of Jesus' Deliverance from the Cross was held at the Commonwealth Institute in Kensington. This was attended by a number of scholars and academics who presented papers discussing the circumstances surrounding the crucifixion of Jesus, after which the Ahmadiyya viewpoint regarding the death of Jesus was presented. 
Nasir Ahmad also gave a lecture dealing with the subject of Jesus' survival from death upon the cross, his travel to the East, the unity of God, and the status of Muhammad. In 2003, the possibility of Rosa Bal being Jesus' tomb was discussed in a BBC documentary by Richard Denton, Did Jesus Die? Jesus' possible travels to India are also discussed in the 2008 documentary Jesus in India by Paul Davids. Jesus on the Cross – Survival, Journey to Kashmir and Death Topic. Topic. Death of Jesus Topic. Topic. Biblical accounts Topic. Ahmadis also illustrate the notion of Jesus having survived the crucifixion through biblical analysis. Jesus had prophesied that his fate would be like that of Jonah the story of Jonah is one of survival, Matt 1240. Jesus was placed on the cross for only a few hours. Death by crucifixion usually takes several days. While he was on the cross his legs were left intact, and not broken as was the normal procedure. This would have prevented death by respiratory distress. As blood and water were reported to have gushed from the spear wound, this was sign of a beating heart. Jesus prayed to be rescued from death on the cross. Matt 21 22. Pilate, having sympathy for Jesus, secretly devised to save him by setting his crucifixion shortly before Sabbath day. The Gospel of John records that Nicodemus brought myrrh and aloes. John chapter 19 verse 39. These healing plants, particularly aloe plants, are considered medicinal and applied to wounds. It would make little sense applying them to a dead body. According to the Bible, he that is hanged is accursed of God, doi 21-23, something Paul of Tarsus imputed to Jesus, Gal 3:13. However, since the word curse would signify a satanic connection, divine antipathy and displeasure, spiritual impurity, faithlessness and disobedience to God, Jesus being from God and the beloved of God, does not allow for him to have become accursed at any moment and therefore for him to have died on a cross. After he had awoken from his swoon, resurrection, Jesus bared his wounds to Thomas John chapter 20 verses 25 to 27, showing he did not have a supernatural, resurrected body, but a wounded human body. He was also seen in the flesh by a large number of his followers, bearing the same wounds that he had suffered from his ordeal on the cross. Luke chapter 24 verses 38 to 39. After his wounds had sufficiently healed, Jesus left the tomb and met some of his disciples and had his food with them and walked from Jerusalem to Galilee. Luke chapter 24 verse 50. In his post-crucifixion appearances, Jesus left the tomb in the darkness of night. John chapter 20 verse 1. He appears to have been moving away from the source of danger. Luke chapter 24 verses 28 to 29. He showed himself only to his disciples, people whom he trusted and not the general public. John chapter 14 verse 22. And met them under the cover of darkness at night. John chapter 20 verse 19. This behavior is uncharacteristic of one who had just miraculously succeeded in defying death at the hands of his enemies, having been given a new eternal life with an immortal physical body, and is more consistent with one who had just survived it and was avoiding their that is both the government agencies and the public notice lest he be recaptured. Jesus stated that he was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 and prophesied that he would go to seek out the lost ten tribes of Israel residing beyond the Palestine region John chapter 10 verse 16. The Jews of Jesus' time believed that the lost tribes of Israel had become dispersed in different lands. John chapter 7 verses 34 to 35. When Joseph requested Jesus' body from the cross Mark chapter 15 verse 43, Pilate asked a centurion if Jesus was already dead Mark chapter 15 verse 44. The centurion confirmed that Jesus was already dead Mark chapter 15 verse 45. This centurion was a believer that Jesus was the Son of God Mark chapter 15 verse 39. There are no accounts in the Gospel of Jesus ascending into the heavens, aside from accounts that were absent from the earliest written Gospels. After surviving crucifixion, Jesus fled to Galilee. Jesus, along with several disciples, later left Palestine to further preach the Gospel to the lost tribes of Israel John chapter 10 verse 16 that had scattered as far as Afghanistan and northern India. 
He eventually settled in Kashmir where he was given the name Yuz Asaf meaning leader of the healed, son of Joseph. See also the natural death of Jesus. Topic: <laughs> Quranic accounts. Topic: Ahmadiyya state that there are at least 30 verses of the Quran that suggest that Jesus did not ascend to heaven but instead died a natural death on earth. The verses in chapter Al-Nisa 4 to 157 minus 158 indicate that Jesus did not die on the cross but that God had raised Jesus unto himself not into heaven. 4 to 157 and they're saying we did kill the Messiah Jesus son of Mary the messenger of Allah whereas they slew him not nor crucified him but he was made to appear to them like one crucified and those who differ therein are certainly in a state of doubt about it they have no definite knowledge thereof, but only follow a conjecture, and they did not convert this conjecture into a certainty 4-158 On the contrary, Allah raised him to himself. And Allah is mighty, wise. As the Quran speaks of God being omnipresent in the earth and in the hearts of mankind, God S existence is not to be misconstrued as being confined to the heavens alone, making any bodily movement towards God impossible. Thus, Ahmadis interpret the Arabic word for raised in these verses to mean exalted. In other words, Jesus' spiritual rank and status was raised to come closer to God as opposed to dying the accursed death which his adversaries had wished for. To further support the view of Jesus having died a mortal death, Ahmadis interpret the verse in the Quran 5-75. 5-76 The Messiah, son of Mary, was only a messenger, surely messengers the like unto him had passed away before him. And his mother was a truthful woman. They both used to eat food. See how we explain the signs for their good, and see how they are turned away. In this verse Jesus is compared to the previous messengers, all of which had died a natural death and none of whom had ascended bodily to heaven. From the following verse in Al-Imran, the Quran clarifies that all messengers before the Prophet Muhammad had died 3-145 and Muhammad is only a messenger. Verily, all messengers have passed away before him. If then he die or be slain, will you turn back on your heels? This verse pertains that all previous prophets including Jesus had died. Topic. Hadith accounts Topic. Ahmadi scholars have provided references citing hadith regarding the death of Jesus. If Jesus and Moses had been alive, they would have had no choice but to follow me. Cather Vol. 2, p. 245 and al yawakit Wal Jawahar, Part 2, page 24 Jesus son of Mary lived for 120 years, and I see myself as only entering upon the beginning of the sixties. Kanz al umul Part 6, p.120 As Muhammad has lived and died after some sixty years, it means that Jesus is also dead. As Muhammad is dead, this states that there likewise was a death of Jesus. During the Miraj, Muhammad had seen Jesus in the second heaven along with John the Baptist. Thus, it means Jesus is dead because the dead do not dwell amongst the living. Topic. Second coming of Jesus Topic. The Hadith and the Bible indicate that Jesus will return during the latter days. Islamic Hadith commonly depicts that Jesus, upon his second coming, would be in. Amati, Muslim, and a follower of Muhammad, and that he would revive the truth of Islam rather than fostering a new religion. Topic: Similarities to Jesus. Topic: The movement interprets the prophesied second coming of Jesus as being of a person similar to Jesus, Mathal i Isa, rather than that of Jesus of Nazareth himself. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad professed that the prophecy in traditional religious texts were greatly misunderstood to interpret that Jesus of Nazareth himself would return. Ahmadis consider that the founder of the movement, in both his teachings and character as well as his situation and struggles, was representative of Jesus. Henceforth, Ahmadis believe this prediction, the second coming, was fulfilled by Ahmad and continued by his movement. Topic. Universal prophethood. Topic. 
The Ahmadiyya movement assert the expected arrival of a Latter day Messiah is historically represented across all major faiths. The prophecy regarding a Latter day Messiah had diverged into separate theories and distinct interpretations, and this filtered through to different religious movements. This prophecy nonetheless was originally only intended to refer to a single Messiah. As such, Ahmadis declared that the Messiah concerning all major world faiths has been unified by the advent of a single promised Messiah Ghulam Ahmad. Ahmadis believe that all world faiths will gradually move towards Ahmadiyya, and that such a process will follow a correlative pattern of circumstances and take a similar amount of time to what it took for Christianity to rise to dominance roughly 300 years. Contention with mainstream Islamic beliefs The Encyclopedia of Islam states that the post-crucifixion journey of Jesus towards the East and his natural death as an aspect of Ahmadi belief is one of three primary tenets that distinguish Ahmadi teachings from general Islamic ones, and that it has provoked a fatwa against the movement. The claim that Mirza Ghulam was a prophet forms a point of contention with mainstream Islam, as it views this as a contradiction to the Quranic and Hadith teachings of Muhammad. Contemporary Islamic scholars view the Ahmadiyya belief as a contradiction with a verse in the Quran, chapter 33, the combined forces, verse 40. Muhammad is not the father of any one of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and seal of the prophets. And ever is Allah of all things knowing. Further, in the farewell sermon of the Prophet Muhammad, delivered just prior to his death, he warned his followers and all of mankind with the following message: O people! No prophet or apostle will come after me and no new faith will be born. Reason well, therefore O people, and understand words that I convey to you. I leave behind me two things, the Quran and the Sunnah and if you follow these you will never go astray. Ahmadis believe however, in accordance with the Hadith traditions, that the last of the prophets is meant to signify the very best and most exalted lawgiver prophet among all the prophets and that the farewell sermon had only signified that no prophet would come immediately after the prophet Muhammad had died. The movement believe the interpretation of finality that is upheld by the mainstream Islamist view, paradoxes the hadith concerning the second advent of Jesus altogether. For instance if Jesus is expected to return physically, as contemporary Islamic scholars uphold, it would be completely implausible considering that at the same time it is impossible for any prophet to come after the prophet Muhammad. The hadith indicated when the prophet Muhammad had declared himself as the last of the prophets, with the same breath he had also declared his mosque as the last of the mosque. Aisha narrated that the prophet Allah's prayer and salvation be upon him said. I am the last of the Prophet and my mosque is the last of the mosques of the Prophets. The most rightful of the mosque that may be visited and for which the vigors of the journey may be born are the Masjid Haram and my mosque, and a Salah in my mosque is more excellent than a Salah in any other mosque by one thousand times, except the Masjid Haram." Reported by Al-Bazar and authenticated by Sheikh Albani in Sahih Targib No. 1175. This hadith implicates the view of Muhammad as being the last in the absolute sense. If the Prophet Muhammad declared his mosque being last of the mosques then by the same interpretation this would have effectively invalidated all other mosques. But this hadith also mentions that the last of the mosques of the prophets, which is known as Masjid, e. Nabawi, the Prophet Muhammad lived there and is also buried there. But this hadith does not show last of the mosques. Rather it shows last of the mosques of the prophets. Ahmadiyya are decepted because of wrong interpretation of hadith. The Ahmadiyya understanding of the term seal of prophets with reference to Muhammad, establishes that a prophet cannot come after Muhammad from outside the Islamic dispensation. Nor can one whose prophethood is independent of Muhammad. Jesus' ministry, according to the Quran, was limited to the Israelites and since he received his prophecy independently of Muhammad, his physical return after the advent of Muhammad, as contemporary Muslims expect, violates the seal of prophethood. Topic. Consensus of companions of Muhammad on Jesus' death Topic. Ahmadi scholars profess that when Prophet Muhammad died, the Sahaba were grieved. 
Umar, angered and upset, took out a sword, and said that he would kill anyone who said Muhammad is dead. At this instance Abu Bakr quoted, 3 to 144 and Muhammad is but a messenger, the messengers passed away before him, if then he dies or is killed will you turn back upon your heels? And whoever turns back upon his heels, he will by no means do harm to Allah in the least and Allah will reward the grateful. The Ahmadiyya sect believes that because no companion said Jesus is alive in heaven and he would come physically in second coming, the implication invariably is that Jesus died a natural death and not on the cross. Topic. Fulfillment of Messianic prophecies Topic. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad regarded the prophecies and concepts in Hadith and Bible concerning his advent in an entirely metaphorical light. For example, he wrote, The second special aspect of the prophecy, which relates to the advent of the promised Messiah, is that he will break the cross, slaughter the swine and kill the one-eyed Antichrist. Every disbeliever who is touched by his breath will die instantly. The spiritual interpretation of this special aspect is that the promised Messiah will crush under his feet all the glory of the religion of the cross, that he will destroy with the weapon of conclusive arguments those who are afflicted with shamelessness like swine, and who devour filth like pigs, and that he will wipe out with the sword of clear proofs the opposition of those who possess only the eye of the world and are bereft of the eye of the faith in place of which they have only an unsightly taint. Not only such one-eyed ones, but also every disbeliever who views Islam with contempt will suffer spiritual extinction through the glorious breath of messianic reasoning. In short all these signs are metaphoric, the significance of which has been fully revealed to me. Some may not appreciate it at this time but after waiting for some time, and despairing altogether of the hopes that they now entertain, all of them will accept it. Azala e Auham, Volume 3, pages 141-143. Topic. Breaking of the cross Topic. The Islamic hadith describe that Jesus would, upon his second coming, break the cross. Ahmadis interpret this to mean that he will make plain the error of the creed of the cross. Ghulam Ahmad S. Teachings of Jesus, being a mortal man who survived crucifixion and died a natural death upon earth, is considered as a testimony of the prophecy being fulfilled. Ahmadi's believe the followers of Christianity will gradually come to accept the same teaching and this will repeal the central doctrines of the divinity of Jesus, atonement and resurrection. In turn, the traditional Christian reverence for the cross and doctrine of the immortality of Jesus will become untenable. Topic. Ending of wars Topic. In 1894, Ghulam Ahmad had declared that the contemporary Islamists' views of jihad of the sword and holy war was a misrepresentation of Islam that was invented during the Dark Ages and advocated for these beliefs to be ended in its entirety. The Ahmadiyya movement contend that any military jihad in Islam is permitted only as an exclusively religious defensive measure in very strictly defined circumstances and those circumstances do not exist at present. As a result, early Ahmadis had faced virulent opposition from extremist groups, some of whom protested that Ghulam Ahmad was put in place by the British government to appease Muslims. Ahmadis believe that in the modern era, the jihad of the pen Intellectual reasoning is the only potent way of espousing and spreading the Islamic teaching and this has taken the place of jihad of the sword as per scriptural prophecies. As such the movement consider the prophecies in the hadith relating to ending of religious wars had been fulfilled by Ghulam Ahmad teachings. Topic. Journey from Palestine to India Topic. According to Ghulam Ahmad, and further developed by the next generation of Ahmadi writers such as Khwaja Nazir Ahmad in 1952, Jesus taught the message of Jewish messianism to his disciples and to the people living in Palestine. After surviving his ordeal on the cross, Jesus remained in Palestine for a short time before leaving from there. Jesus was declared a criminal and therefore, decided to leave Palestine with his mother Mary, his wife Mary Magdalene and his apostle Thomas the Apostle. Thereafter, Jesus traveled toward Asia. Topic. From Palestine to Iraq Topic. With these three companions, he went first to Iraq. 
Here he met his disciple, Ananias. He met his rival Paul who later became a Christian. In Nusabin, he got another tension at the hands of a cruel king. He was arrested again. Prophet Jesus along with his mother performed some miracles and impressed the king. The king gave him permission to go to Parthia kingdom. There was a strong Jewish community living there. Topic. Iraq to Iran and Afghanistan Topic. From Iraq, he went to Iran where he was honorably received by the Persian Jews. Five centuries before Cyrus the Great had conquered Babylon and the Jews were freed. Many of the Jews went to live in Iran and were known as Persian Jews. Jesus preached here and went on to Bactria, Afghanistan. At that time, Persia was a great center of Judaism. He professed the advent of the coming of a great prophet named Muhammad to his fellowmen in these areas especially in the area of Afghanistan. He met with the first king of Parthia who honored him. The Pashtun people have a tradition in their royal and non-royal functions and consider themselves to be the sons of children of Israel. Many of these Persian Jews who had been receiving the teachings from Jesus proselytized to Muslims at the time of Muhammad and accepted his call. Qais Abdur Rashid, his name is this and the original was Kish. Topic. Final places of Jesus Kashmir, Tibet and India Topic. Topic. Reasons for coming to India Topic. According to Ahmadiyya sources Islam International Publications Limited the tribes of Israel who had migrated to eastern countries seeing the attraction in Hinduism and Buddhism had themselves become Hindus and Buddhists. They subsequently became unaware of their religion. Jesus and Thomas the Apostle had later arrived in India to restore the Abrahamic teachings to these tribes. Topic. Jesus meets King Shailwin. Topic. According to a late section of the Hindu Bhavishya Purana, written after 1739, Jesus Christ met a Hindu monarch, King Shalavayan. The king along with his companions went to the peak of Himalayas to meet a man who was a dignified person of fair complexion in white clothes sitting in the mountain. When the king asked who he was, the man replied, I am the Messiah, born of a virgin. He told the king he had come from a far-off place where he has suffered at the hands of his people. When the king asked what religion he adhered to, he said that his religion was of peace, love and purity of heart. The king was impressed, so he paid homage to him. Topic. Tomb of Jesus Topic. During his initial research into Jesus' death, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad postulated that Jesus may have been buried in either Galilee or Syria. After investigating further he eventuality uncovered evidence to conclude that the tomb of Jesus was located at the Rosa Bal Shrine in Srinagar, Kashmir. Based upon this evidence, Ahmadis today believe the tomb of Jesus is located in the Srinagar region of Kashmir. Ghulam Ahmad, and later Ahmadi writers cite various evidences for identifying the grave as that of Jesus, the Bhavishya Maha Purana official decree, the glass mirror, Tariq-i Kashmir, Qisa Shahzada, the Garden of Solomon Bog -i Suleiman of Mir Sadula Shahabadi Kashmiri 1780 AD, Wajisat Tawarik, Iqbal Ud Din 962 AD, the Ain ul Hayat, the Akta Tameh, Takat Suleiman, Throne of Solomon, a hill in Kashmir, Tariq-i Kabir Kashmir, Rauzat us Sa Ahmadis believe that these sources testify to the view that Yusuf and Jesus are the same person. Haji Mohi Ud Din Miskan, writing in 1902, three years after Mirza Ghulam Ahmad in 1899, is the first historian to mention that some connect the shrine of Yusuf as the grave of Hazrat Isa Ru Allah, Jesus the Spirit of God. The importance of the shrine has been preserved in the memory of the descendants of the ancient Israelites to this day. They call the shrine the tomb of Hazrat Isa Sahib, the tomb of Lord Jesus. The building constructed is named Rosa Bal or Rauza Bal. Rauza is generally a term used to denote the tomb of a celebrated personality, i.e. noble, wealthy, or saintly. A local scholar and supporter of the theory, Fida Hasnain, has claimed that the tomb is arranged with the feet pointing in the direction of Jerusalem, and claimed that this is in accordance with Jewish tradition. Ahmadis give the Yusuf enshrined in the tomb the epithet Shahzada Nabi, Prophet Prince. 
The majority Srinagar Sunni Muslim community reject the Ahmadiyya claims that the tomb is that of Jesus and consider this viewpoint as blasphemous. Topic tomb of Mary Topic The Ahmadis also believe that Mary had accompanied her son on the journey to Kashmir. Muslim and Persian documents, the Tafir ibn i Jarir, the Kanz al Umul, and the Rauzat us Safa, have references that contribute to the theory of Jesus' escape. Some of these also mention that Jesus was accompanied by Mary, and there is another burial place in Pakistan, along his theoretical route to Kashmir, known as Mai Mari Da Ashton, or Resting Place of Mother Mary. Topic see also topic Swoon hypothesis Unknown years of Jesus Holger Kursen Substitution hypothesis Basilidians Gospel of Basilides Islamic view of Jesus' death Gospel of Barnabas topic References topic topic External links topic Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, Jesus in India, Ahmadiyya Muslim Foreign Mission Department, 1978, ISBN 978-1-85372-723-8, Original Massey Hindustan Mine, Oriental and Religious Publications Limited. Rabwa online. The Natural Death of Jesus The Life of Saint Isa Nicholas Notovich. Jesus a Humble Prophet of God The Tomb of Jesus website A Buddhist Perspective Holger Kursen's book Jesus Lived in India